Welcome to Healthy Leads, the one-stop podcast that bridges the gap between small to mid-sized businesses and digital marketing in this interconnected age of the internet and artificial intelligence. If you are looking to increase your online lead flow and close deals, or just someone interested in the fusion of business growth and digital marketing, this podcast is your avenue for success. Now, let's get to our hosts, Ryan Atkinson and Angel Ty LeBron. Welcome, everyone, to the Healthy Leads podcast brought to you by Ellington Digital. Today, we are going to talk about how senior living facilities can qualify leads. Angel, ready to run it back for another great week of the Healthy Leads podcast? And hey, listen, as always, man. <laughs> <laughs> and we got to start with some breaking news. Fire the alarms, fire the sirens. Everyone pay attention mm -hmm. because last week we talked about AI and robotics and Disney just released a cute little robot. I uh, don't know the usage case, but they just released it about an hour ago on Tuesday, October 10th. Um, and so, of course, Angel, I've got to ask you, what is your favorite Disney movie? I'm going to say my personal preference is Brother Bear. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I love Brother Bear. <laughs> I always like that one. So, <laughs> the whole idea that would be tied. It would be tied for a second with uh, Encanto. Uh, that was that was the other one, but Brother Bear, I feel I feel like it's like definitely a classic. That you literally just before. threw me like a Clayton Kershaw curveball right there. That is, uh, I was not expecting that answer, but Brother Bear is a great movie. I loved that movie mm -hmm. growing up. Um, my favorite Disney movie is definitely Wall-E. I love Wall-E. Uh, the robot looks like Wall-E, but I'll yeah. tell you my experience with Wall-E. I was Wall-E uh, about three years ago for Halloween. I bought like a Target two dollar box like a big brown box and cut out holes in it and just taped Wally to the front of it. Um, <laughs> so I'm a huge Wally fan. I actually watched it like two months ago and this little robot behind me right now is inspired by Wally. So big Wally oh, fan I, here. Yeah, and literally the the robot that Disney created just looks like a replica of Wally. It just looks like a modern day Wally, like without all the rust and everything. Well, Wally might be the cutest robot out there. So uh, if I was designing a robot too, I would also make it look like Wally. But, uh, to, I feel like even the ones from Creator kind of it looked like grown up Wally's like the way their yeah, face yeah. shape was. Oh yeah, yeah with the little faces <laughs> and adds character on how they built it with like the eyes and stuff. So uh, Disney knows what they're doing, and Wally will stand the test of time. But today we're talking about qualifying leads for senior living communities. I'm excited to talk with you about this. Um, can you just share like what Angel's definition? We open up Angel's Merriam Dictionary, whatever, and lead qualification comes on there. What's your definition of lead qualification? So lead qualification, I would say it's basically kind of like whatever method that a company uses to determine how good of a lead that comes in. So if it, if a lead comes in through one of your forms, your contact us forms, your lead magnet form, whatever it may be, you're basically just judging, okay, is this person on the ready to buy spectrum or are they on like all the way over mm -hmm. here where they're just doing, you know, research. So that, that would be my personal definition. Yeah, and that hits really right on the point because this one that I grabbed from uh, just online was save sales and marketing teams time, money, and energy from chasing leads that are unlikely to make a purchase or result in little to no ROI. And that speaks to what you just said is like when you are qualifying leads in some way, it's just a way for your sales team to focus on like these are prospects that are actually more likely to buy. And there's exactly. criteria um, to doing that. But yeah, I think you summed that up pretty well. Yeah, there's like it's like if you have a if you have someone come in, you're going to be able to know, okay, this person, I could speak to them a certain way, or maybe I have to prioritize yeah. this meeting over this meeting. But it, it definitely gives you a lot of information on what you should be expecting when you go up to that, you know, go into that sales call or something or whatever your sales journey may look like. Yeah, exactly. And there is, we're going to dive into like two specific strategies of what, uh, how you can qualify leads. Um, but before you do this, we just went through this exercise as well. One thing to always get right, if you're listening one thing to always get right before you start this lead qualification process, make sure there is sales and marketing alignment on what qualifies a good lead. And that is the first place to start when you are implementing a strategy. Because I'm sure you have experience when marketing sales aren't aligned, there is no buy-in, no one is happy, and nothing gets done. Yeah, like if, if there's, the, and it's a, it's a common problem that happens. Yeah. Like you're going to get leads coming in, right? But some, it, it starts, what, what happens is like there's a lot of, finger pointing right so yep. like sales may go oh you're not bringing us qualified leads and marketing may go well we have this lead magnet out and you know maybe the person is in you know this other you know stage of the sales cycle over here rather than over here but we're bringing you like five times as much as leads you know but yep. then sales is just going to go back and be like 
uh, but we need we need more better qualified etc so it's definitely always a battle between two departments a lot of the times yeah and that is why the first step in always doing this is ensuring that there is buy-in and when we went through our lead scoring like strategy here and we'll talk about this one in depth but one of the very first slides i presented on was we need to be aligned here like this is what sales wants this is what marketing wants and like how can we fit this so we're all on the same highway driving and we did that by we want qualified leads you want qualified leads how can we do that and one strategy out there there's a couple of the two that we're going to talk about one is the prime strategy also known as bant um, and prime is an acronym for price role insight Mo moment evaluation so let's tackle price first. Can they afford your community? Do they require the help of insurance? And I think this is one of the classic ones to do is basically budget. What's their buy-in or what? How, can they actually afford to go to your senior living community? Yeah, because I mean, some some communities are going to be able to accept that, mm -hmm. that insurance and then other ones are going to be fully private. So that's really a big kind of factor, like especially if you're going to be on Google ads or anything like that. You may get leads that type in that mm -hmm. search term, you know, with insurance or sometimes they won't even use the search term. They may just apply and then they they show up to the sales call and they're like, oh, yeah, do you accept X, Y, Z insurance? So and that will kind of make people a little angry. So it's always good to like in any any shape or form, if you can block it out, if you know that your your senior living facility doesn't accept it or if it does accept it, then awesome. You can still bring those people in. But it's definitely important to know, OK, where is this person in terms of affording? where we're where our facility is and how much it costs yeah and that really goes back to like the definition as well because like if your senior facility is um, more upper upper tier upper price uh, in the upper mm -hmm. price range and this person just doesn't have the budget that just sales shouldn't go after them and so it's really important yeah. to define one what's like a good target range we can go after what's our average um what's the average price to be here um, and then also disqualify people so it's always great to start with the price uh, within that prime strategy yeah, and people could do that instantly from the beginning so that it's a lot easier on the sales team by mm -hmm. having like, like, let's say you have your form, right? It's, it's nothing to just put another field that says, hey, what is your budget or, or are you using XYZ insurance or, you know, having that questionnaire that, that you can qualify them. Or if you're using appointment setters, like, cause a lot of senior living facilities are going to have virtual, not virtual tours, they're going to have actual tours nowadays. Mm -hmm. So, uh. There's a good way to just like have someone call and just be like, hey, just wanted to make sure everything's all set for your tour. I uh, just wanted to ask you some follow up questions. So like that's yep. another way that you can kind of get that information. Yeah, either phone call or just on the form. Uh, either way, you can do that. But definitely at the price because that is how sales and marketing is going to be aligned of who should we should really go after. And once you have price, let's go with role. Is this the person who is making the decision? Um, within a lot of the senior facilities, um, it could be the person that's actually going to be living there. But also, oftentimes we see it as an older uh, child or someone that's just a caregiver for the person. And so being able to define who is best, who has most frequently made that decision for your own facility is a great way to also prime it um, and understand uh, how good of a lead this is. Yeah, 100%. And I, same, same thing as the other one. Literally, you can put it in the form where you can just have someone just call right up and just be like, hey. Are you going to be the one that's actually living here? Or are you going to be the one that's making the decision, et cetera? So all that yeah. information, definitely necessary. I do think it is hard um, for the decision maker one. Um, and I'd be curious of any ideas that you have as well about like, mm -hmm. some people might think they're the decision maker, but they're actually <laughs> not the decision maker. And so actually having those questions like narrowed down, like, is this person actually a decision maker is super important as well. Yeah. I feel like it just comes down to who's the person paying. You yeah. know, like, it's, just like, it's literally just like, okay, like who's going to be paying for this? Whoever's involved in grabbing money or taking the card yep. from their pocket and then ending it over is usually going to be the decision maker. So as soon, the sooner you can get to that question without being asking it maybe in a crude manner, it would be the <laughs> best. <laughs> yes. Um, and moving down this prime strategy, we've covered price, we've covered role. And we're now we're going to cover insight. And this type of question is going to be, what type of care are they looking for? Do they need more care? Do they need less care? How hands-on do you need to be? How hands-off do you need to be? Medical questions as well. So um, once you identify the price role, actually ask the person that's going to be living there um, what type of medical attention that they're going to be needing. 100% because you have skilled nursing, assisted living, um, in-home care. There's so many different types of care that they're all yeah. going to have different price ranges. So definitely important to get that get that locked in mm -hmm. absolutely 
and moving down as well, because um, we do have a lot to cover today. We've got price, <laughs> role, insight, and moment. How immediate is their need to move in? If someone's wanting to move in next week, you're going to prioritize that. If they're wanting to move <laughs> in next year, it's a little bit of a different situation. So and again, that can be, like you said, on the form or in the phone call. How immediate are you actually looking to live here? 100%. Yeah. And I think the last one is uh, evaluation, right? So that one would be about document and analyze each interaction to refine and optimize and lastly confirm their phone number is actually a real number. So I could touch on that point because what we've been recently doing is on the forms, right? A lot of times, a lot of bots will come in and it's like, you don't want to have to, you don't want to have to keep, you know, scra uh, scraping through your whole entire lead list. And you just know that some of these people are fake. So a lot of the times what we, what we've recently done is on the form, you have to put in your phone number, but a code will get sent to your phone and you can't continue to, you can't go forward on the form unless you type in the code that will send to your phone to send to your phone. So that way it's like, if it's a bot that <laughs> they're most likely not going to go on their phone and be like, okay, let me type this other two factor authentication. in. so that, that right there has instantly slashed the amount of fake leads or bots or unqualified leads. Yeah. And when I first heard of this strategy, uh, my cos, my pros and cons that came to mind is cons. It's like, it's a little bit harder to like get through this gate and it does add a lot of friction of there to get it. But the pros mm -hmm. are, if they do, that just makes them even more qualified because you know, they entered in their phone number and one, they're not a bot, but two, these people are super interested. Yeah. And the thing is too, it's like, if you're on Google ads or Facebook ads, any of these types of systems where it's an algorithmic learning, mm -hmm. you're you're almost in a sense teaching the system to go after the most best quality lead possible. Because beforehand, without that uh, two-factor verification, there's a bunch of bots, like I said, that are going to come through and people that aren't qualified. So Google is going to learn to go after those people. So if you have a system to actually prevent that, maybe you don't even need to do it for a long period of time. You could just do it for a yeah. short period of time to uh, teach the system how to go after those people. And then you could turn it off. And then now Google's going to, <laughs> there's going to be a lot more people that come through because they don't have to do all that verification because yeah like you said there is a lot of friction with that but yeah you know every time we talk on this podcast uh and people listening as well if you need a google expert reach out to elliot and digital and angel because <laughs> angel you are literally a whiz at google pvc and it is so impressive every time i talk to you about what you know about this so uh, definitely reach out for your living facility as well <laughs> appreciate it appreciate it yeah and then, so we talked about the prime strategy. We've got our price, role, insight, moment, and evaluation. One technique that I love is lead scoring. And can you give us your definition of lead scoring, Angel? We already got your lead yeah. qualification, but what are you thinking for lead scoring? So lead scoring is going to be the actual number of how you quantify it. So mm -hmm. for example, you may have a lead that comes in, you may just give it a seven, like on the scale of one to 10, one being the most least qualified, and then seven being like, okay, they're like three notches away from being ready to go at this moment. So scoring would just be the factor of how do you assign a number or any type of quantifiable yeah. way to say, where is this person in that customer journey? Yep, exactly. And so like one example you could have is like, if you ask for someone's age, let's just say they're 80 years old, 90 years old, whatever your number is. And that is perfect for like what you're looking for. You can assign a numeric value of like five to it because that's a great mm -hmm. fit. And you might be thinking, well, five's not that high, but if you can also combine that with like location, the financial qualifications, which will also have numbers, you're going to get to 10 pretty dang quick. Um, and so that's just one way to think about it. So if we go back to our price strategy, can they afford your company? Let's say they can, like they're looking for the price range is perfect for you. You can add a sign of four right there. And it's easy mm -hmm. math because it's four out of 10, 40% out of 10 qualified. Then once you add everything else, boom, you're at 10 and sales is happy because they now have a qualified lead. <laughs> Yeah. And then it all comes down to like, if, let's say you have someone that meets like three of the qualifications, but then sometimes you have to kind of factor it in like, okay, yeah, this person may be ready to move in six months down the line, but they're, they have the, they have the budget ready. They have this, this, and this, that they, they don't want insurance. They can afford it. Like they may have even signed a commitment or something like that. Yeah. You know? So there's different ways to score it based on how they're, how they factor in into like, okay, age. Does yeah. it have insurance? When are they ready to move, et cetera? Yeah. And I think this is like, it's a relatively, it sounds like it's a heavy lift, um, but we're currently doing it. And it's actually a very low lift. All you need to do is def define five to 10 parameters. Um, and if you use like a CRM like HubSpot or any of the CRMs, they're going to have a lead scoring technique. 
And like I said, if you're at a 10, age can be worth four points, the max, the next could be worth like two, three, all that stuff. I mean, that's really mm-hmm. how you do get qualified leads is using a technique like lead scoring. I mean, hundred percent, like it's almost invaluable. <laughs> like, cause if you, yeah. if you could get sales, if sales is happy and marketing is happy, everyone's happy. <laughs> yes. Everyone is happy and everyone is happy in the senior living community. And what I think is also cool about lead scoring um, is you can actually do it depending on the systems that you have in place, um, the automation you have in place, you can actually do it also on like the engagement level on your website. So if you already have their contact information and you see the person keeps coming back to your website over and over and over again, you can also assign a score there. Um, so if you're listening, think about those five to 10 parameters that you want to have based out of score out of 10 out of 100, uh, whatever you want to do. And then anything over like 65 is a sales qualified lead. Anything over like 35 is a marketing qualified lead, just throwing numbers out here. Um, but it is such a cool way to be able to uh, identify leads that are qualified and ready to go. Yeah. And I know like the perfect tool to be able to do something like exactly like what you just said um, would be Hotjar. I know that mm. we're actually about to try to implement that into our systems. So like with Hotjar, for example, you can see, and there's also other tools like Clarity. There's a lot of tools, but um, for example, Hotjar, you'll be able to see like, okay, this person spent X amount of time on the website and let's say they actually fill the lead out, the lead mm-hmm. form out, then you can, you know, assign some type of score. You could tag them with something so that you can reach out to them instantly or something like that, whatever the parameter may be that, that made them go okay, like this is like a 10, this, this is a hot lead, right? We need to contact, contact them as soon as possible. Yeah. And there's a ton of, so you might be thinking, is this actually true? Yes. There are a ton of metrics to, uh, to really back all this up. I found one stat online that lead scoring increases deal close rates by 30% and company revenue by 18%. Um, of course those go basically hand in hand, but if you're able to identify better leads, you're able to close them faster and ultimately, um, or ultimately resulting in an increase in revenue. So there are so many cool uh, statistics out there. And Angel, I have a trivia question for you. I hope you're not looking at the sheet here. Um, so close <laughs> it out. But I, I, I do want to ask you, so the use of lead scoring is highest in the technology and software industries, followed by blank and blank. What would be your next two guesses? Different industries, in of, blank and blank. Uh, uh, dang. After this, uh, uh, I would say maybe IT. Well, I guess that's kind of technology at the same time, right? Yeah, like, it's not maybe, IT. Maybe. <laughs> okay. Uh, I give up on this time. Maybe, maybe medical or something. <laughs> what, what's actually really interesting is healthcare is number three and finance is number four. Finance. Okay. That would make finance sense. Finance just makes sense because the parameters that are going to be in place for like budget, timeline, all that stuff are right there. Then mm-hmm. healthcare as well. I mean, that it just makes sense. So. A lot of senior living facilities, they may not be implementing this now, but it is a usage case across the healthcare industry. Yeah. I feel, I feel like it's a usage case across any business though, too. It's like, for sure. If, if you have a way, if you have to, like, if you have sales and you have a marketing department, it's almost like this is kind of a necessary thing at the end of the day, you know? So like, I feel like this could be still applied to whatever the business might be, but especially if you're in uh, healthcare. Yeah, absolutely. It's, um, it's cool. And then there's just a bunch of other stats about like, once you do get like this qualified lead, offer an in, offer a home visit. Uh, prospects mm-hmm. are four times more likely to move in if they received a home visit from a sales representative with conversion rates jumping from 9% to an average of 39%. Mm-hmm. And so once you're qualified mm-hmm. those leads, make sure you're getting those in-person uh, home visits. I'm, I'm curious why you think that is though. I, ha- I have my own opinion, but I'm, I'm curious why you think that is. Like the, that conversion rate jumps to the... It's literally 30, there's, almost dang near 50%. There's something about like this, that authenticity you get about like meeting somebody in person and like being like, yes, like I was talking through email, but like, hello, mm-hmm. like I'm a real person here. Right. Uh, I think that gets lost a lot. So that's one reason yeah. I have, but I'd be curious like what your reason is. Yeah, like that, that's, that's the, literally the exact reason. It's like everything has to be done through emails and text messages and phone. And it's just like, if you're able to see that person face to face, number one, they're taking care of whether whoever the decision maker is, it may just be the actual resident or maybe a family member. Yeah. If a family member or whoever it may be that's going to be living there can see the person's face, it's just like we're humans. That's how we, you know, build trust, yeah. shake hands. And so it's, I can 100% agree that that conversion rate would jump way up. Yeah. There is something, like you said, there is something about like 
that in-person like feel and whatnot. I feel like that's the push so much by like all these big tech companies to be back in person because there is something magical about being in person. So Mm -hmm. trying to see them in person if you are a sales (laughs) representative because your chances of converting are a lot higher. (laughs) 100%. And before you do that, um, a lot of times you will happen with lead calls. Um, one statistic showed that answer respond to all lead calls within five minutes. Research shows that on average, 47% of sales calls to long-term care communities go unanswered, which is pretty staggering. And the odds of reaching a lead decreases by more than 10 times after the first hour. So a ton of stats there to back up. You need to be on time, on timely, and then also uh, visit people in person. So I think that's really cool. Yeah. I, I mean. Sometimes like you'll fill out a form. I, I would imagine you probably fill out a form and like instantly the person sends you a text message and you're just like, oh, yep. I guess I might as well just, I think I'm already in that mindset of handling whatever the situation was. So if you're able to get to that lead as fast as possible, it's your close rate is only, it's way higher than the longer you wait, the more it just drops. So there's something to be said about flipping the pancake while it's hot and uh, getting to lead quick. I just made up that metaphor or whatever. Yeah, I'm like, out my head, but it's, no, that's, like the most, that. that's the most perfect analogy, literally. <laughs> <laughs> well, Angel, today we talked about two different strategies for lead qualification, the prime strategy, price, role, insight, moment, and evaluation, lead scoring, and then just dropped a ton of statistics. And so that'll wrap us up today. And guys, you can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, 